There's nothing more frustrating than your blender scene being slow while you're trying to get your ideas on the screen. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at eight ways to make your scene lighter, faster, and with that, increase your productivity. Link your assets instead of appending them into the scene. If you're familiar with Maya, this is the same thing as referencing your file. Instead of your file storing all the information and all the data and making it heavy, it's going to be borrowing the information, referencing it from a different file, from a source file. And because your file doesn't have all that information, it's only borrowing it, your file is going to be way lighter. The only downside of linking instead of appending or referencing instead of appending is you can't edit something that you've linked or something that you've reference so you should only link things that you know you're not going to edit the source file of just try and link as many things as you can and you don't even have to link one by one you can actually link entire collections so for example if i open a new blender file and i want to link this entire lights collection with all of these lights in there i can do that so here i can just go to file link find the file that i just showed you open it up go to collections and find the lights collection I'm gonna go ahead and link and right away, I have the entire collection of lights I was using. I know I don't want to touch them, so I can link those in. And the size of this file won't change at all. Unload anything you don't need to see. So this would include any background objects or things your character isn't going to interact with. So what you want to do is go over here in the outliner and open up the filter. Make sure you click on the screen so that you can see this screen here and start unloading things. So I can go into the cockpit. Let's say I want to disable the entire cockpit geometry to make my scene lighter. So I can go ahead and click the screen. The cockpit is gone. I can even hide the widgets. And you know what? I can turn these on and just turn off the entire collection altogether, including the controllers. Keep in mind that this screen is different than the eye. So if I have the screen on and I just press the eye button, all this does is that it makes it invisible. But once you press the screen instead of the eye, it actually unloads all that geo and all those controllers from the file, making your scene actually faster. The eye doesn't do anything. It's just a visual thing. The screen makes a difference. Use Simplify. Under your render properties right here, scroll down until you reach Simplify. Make sure to press the check mark. And then once you open it up, reduce viewport subdivision to zero from six. Make sure to leave render at six but if we zoom in here you can see that once we turn this on and off you can see some differences to the hand and to the controllers that's okay that's only a visual difference for you but it makes a huge difference to the performance of the file to give you an example if I turn the simplify off and I press play you can see that we're running at around three frames per second in the scene because the rig itself is very heavy but we have a set with a bunch of geo now if I turn on subdivision with viewport being set to zero and press play again you can see now that we're running at 6.6 .6 and sometimes even seven frames per second basically doubling our frames per second by just pressing simplify reduce your rigs subdivision and choose a lower resolution if possible not every rig has this option but if it does our rigs give you the option to go from high res to medium res where you still have access to the face to low res which it basically becomes a proxy and you lose access to the face but the performance increases the most so if you need to animate the face you make sure to choose medium instead of low it increases the performance but it still allows you access to animate the face controllers now i'm going to go ahead and select low now that it's on proxy, I'm going to press play and we're getting close to eight frames per second now. So slowly but surely we're increasing our frames per second. To animate students get movie quality character rigs like Max right here, as well as dozens of rigged props as well. All the assets you get in our ultimate animation course actually end up equaling the full price of the course. So the additional 100 plus video lessons, the PDF handbooks under each lesson, the custom made dialogues and the private community where all your questions get answered are essentially just a bonus on top. So if you're looking to take your animation skills to the next level and learn with over 1000 other artists, go to toanimate.ca and get access to our ultimate animation course. Make a new scene inside of your Blender file. Now this might not make a huge difference if your file isn't very, very heavy, but in productions, I've had files which have been almost impossible to work with from the amount of 
sets and props and all these things in the background that I didn't need, but it was for other parts of the production later on. In that situation, this method saved my life. So what we're gonna do up here where it says scene, I'm gonna go ahead and collect the little two papers and then press new. Now we have a new scene inside the same Blender file. We have scene 001, which is our new one. And then we have the scene, which is the original scene. So in the original scene, I've selected our character rig and all the mesh pieces. And what I'm gonna do is go to object, link, transfer data, link objects to scene and select scene 001. So what we're telling Blender here is everything we have selected, I want you to link this into the new Blender scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and press link. Now, if we go to scene 001, you can see that our character is here. And I guess I didn't select one of the eyes, but you wanna select everything. And here you can see Max is uh, doing the whole animation and any changes you make in this scene will then apply to the original scene. So you can do animation in the scene without any background and then go back to the main scene where it's super heavy and your animation will be there. This method is probably easier than the unloading one that we talked about. If this scene has a lot of different assets and you're working in the production where you don't want to turn off something that's going to cause issues later down the pipeline. This way, if the scene is heavy, you just make a brand new scene and just bring your character in there and all your animations get transferred back into the main scene. No problems, no hassle, super fast way to just make your life a little bit easier. Duplicate linked instead of regular duplicate. If you need to duplicate objects in your scene and you know you're not gonna be editing them, you can use Alt D instead of Shift D. And just like linking, you're just making a reference to the original source object. I'll give you an example. So here, if I want to make a duplicate of this screen, this could be anything. This could be trees in the background that you need a lot of trees for. As long as you don't mind all the trees looking the same, you can just press Alt D and you've made a duplicate of it. But the scene doesn't get any heavier because like we said, this is just linking from the source file. So here, for example, if I make any changes, go to edit mode and select here and I move it, you can see it's just copying the original source model. So if I make any changes to the source model, it makes that change to the duplicate as well. So essentially your objects become twinsies forever, forever and, and ever and ever. ever and ever. But anyways, at least this way you can have a hundred trees in your scene and it won't make your scene any heavier. I feel like a lot of people don't actually know about this, but really is a game changer. If you're liking the video so far and have learned something, then make sure to smash the like button. It's free and it will help the video reach other artists. So just take the time, two seconds, hit the like button and let's move on to the next point. Frame dropping. Now this one isn't necessarily about making your scene lighter, but it's about showing you how your animation looks even if your file is super, super heavy. So here with the cockpit turned off and our character on medium resolution, when we press play, it's actually doing a pretty decent job at 18 frames per second, but it's still not real time. And when you're animating, you need to see your animation in real time. Otherwise you're reliant on play blasting every single time you make a change. The only way you can actually see your animation in real time is by changing playback from every single frame because at every single frame, the computer tries to process every single frame, one frame at a time, and it's trying to show it to you as fast as it possibly can. It's just not able to all the time. So what you can do is change play every frame to frame dropping. This way, Blender will actually prioritize showing you 24 frames per second, which is the frame rate that we've set, instead of trying to prioritize showing you every single frame. So you can see the timing of your animation, but you won't see every single frame. But in animation, timing is everything. So here we have playback at every frame. And when we press play, you can see that it says seven frames per second, but you can see that animation is playing really, really slowly because it's showing you seven frames per second. But if you go and change playback to frame dropping instead, and you press play, you can see that it, it does say seven frames per second, but the animation is playing real time. So you can see your timing, the timing of your animation, but you see less frames. And this way you don't need to play blast your animation every single time you need to see how the timing feels. It's time to get a better computer. If your scenes are still super slow and crashing a lot, you're just gonna have to get a better computer at this point, or at least a better RAM or a better graphics card. That's just the unfortunate reality of it. You can't do heavy work on a computer meant for browsing and streaming movies and expect to get a good performance out of it. If you're not sure about the specs of the computer when you wanna buy, you can check out this video I made a while ago, still relevant, about the computer specs you need for animation. So go check that out.